Well, hello there, guys, and welcome back to Civilization. First of all, I'd like to apologise to my regular viewers for the lack of video on Sunday, but I've been ill and waiting for my voice to come back. I'm still not quite 100% yet, but I'm well enough to record, so I thought I'd get back in the saddle and get these videos up to date. So, if you can remember back, we are trying to get a scientific victory. Now, I'm only getting 770 research per turn, and I'm into, well, almost turn 350. By this point of the game, I usually like to be around about a thousand research per turn, so I'm a little bit behind, but we can catch up with that. Happiness is not so great either. One of the main things I'm going to have to do from now on is be a little bit more selective about the route that I take through the tech tree. Although we are getting there, I mean, we're pretty much towards the end of the modern era. We're coming into the atomic era. We will need to go through a few things in there. We're going to need advanced ballistics for the SS boosters, which we need to build three of. We're going to need satellites for the cockpit. We're going to need particle physics for the engine. And we're going to need nanotechnology for the stasis chamber. Once we've got those four things, well, technically six, because you have to build three boosters. So once we've got those six things, we take them to our capital city, or whichever city we've built the uh, Apollo program at which is normally your capital it makes sense and then that's where we will assemble our ship now also one of the technologies you can get and i'm trying to remember which one it is now because as usual i've completely forgotten uh, one of these allows you to actually build a spaceship factory and the spaceship uh, factory just reduces the amount of time that it takes to actually build the spaceship parts um, and I just cannot remember for the life of me now which one of these things it is I'm sure it will pop up at some point along the way but at the moment I just cannot remember it has been one of those weeks to be quite honest so let's get on with the next turn just quickly check the diplomacy yet we're still at war with Shaka he's the second highest uh, scorer in the game at the moment uh, Washington's plotting against us. Well, that's hardly a surprise, is it? Um, we are friends with Bismarck, right? That seems like a massive agreement. 20 gold, 1 gold per turn. I might go for the research agreement, actually. It will give us a little bit of boost to our research later. It's not one of the most expensive research agreements that's been proposed to us either. Now, we are currently friendly with Bismarck, and... The thing is with Bismarck is he does have a habit of turning tre uh, treacherous even on his allies. And you've got to be careful, even if you're friendly with him, he can go after you. Uh, Shaka will just try and expand and bully city-states, which is doing incredibly well. I'm half thinking... No, he's not on the coast now. I was half thinking of taking a uh, some boats up there and... and attacking uh, this city from the water but I can't really get to it I don't want to be in a direct conflict with him if I can avoid it I was just hoping to kind of slow down his expansion as it were it'd be far too difficult for me to actually get uh, to his capital city unless I can land a load of units from this side I might actually take a boat out there and have a scout to be honest because I don't know exactly how close that is to the water it's it's not really going to be within hitting distance unless I can get some battleships in there so I'm not going to worry too much about that right now there's not an awful lot I can do so let's go into the next turn now what I was saying about the civilizations right he yeah, he now wants to go against Bismarck, and I don't have any interest in that. Uh, if you actually look on the wiki for Civ 5 and have a look at the leaders, not the civilizations themselves, actually click on the leaders, there's a huge list of traits, and this is the kind of under the hood, behind the scenes things that go on with every, every single leader. And those traits dictate whether that leader is likely to be aggressive, whether they're likely to declare war, how fast they expand, if they prefer to build defensive units or offensive units, uh, what type of victory they like to pursue. And it's, it's those traits that dictate their personality. And those are the things that you can actually alter by, uh, at the start of the game, when you select a new game, clicking random personalities, it actually mixes all those figures up. But it does mean that certain people will always try and do certain things. So, for example, uh, Washington will always try and get a diplomatic victory. And he's usually relatively easy going, but he does like to expand and settle. The, Greece, uh, the Greeks usually tend to go for a diplomatic victory also. Um, they... 
don't mind warmongers too much. So if you start fights with people, you actually get a bit of respect from them. But at the same time, they will pick a fight with you if you start to get friendly with any of the city-states that they pledge to protect. And they do that quite often. The Zulus just care about expanding. They don't really care about culture or science they tend to try and go for a domination victory if any but expansion is their thing so all of the different leaders do have very different traits so we've got a unit to give orders to it's just a caravan at the moment so let's see if we can do something useful with it um we could go to thebes for 13 gold looks like about the best we're going to get at the moment now i still haven't attacked anybody yet there seems very little point in doing so. So yeah, let's go to Thebes. Why not? But I really do need to do something to try and get this science up. Now, unfortunately, we're in a bit of a predicament where we're not really expanding all that much. We need some new technologies. So we're going to keep going on. And hopefully we'll get another great scientist. Right, City Revolts. So that's another Zulu city that has joined Germany. So the Zulus aren't doing particularly great when it comes to the happiness of their people here. Because they're losing cities all over the place. So we've now discovered radio. We can make a broadcast tower which gives us additional culture. We can produce the Eiffel Tower which will give us a lot more happiness and tourism. The National Intelligence Agency. Now this is quite good because it gives us a, an additional spy and it also levels up all of our existing spies and we get a 15% reduction in enemy spy effectiveness. But it does mean you have to have a police station in every city which I don't think we have at the moment so that could be quite expensive. And Broadway which again is culture. But we're going to go into research. Let's have a look at the technology tree just so we can be sure what we're doing here. So in order to get the technologies that we need, we're going to have to research both of these anyway. But which one is going to give us the best? Well, ballistics is more of a, a military thing. It does lead to radar, but it mainly gives us the anti-aircraft gun and the machine gun. If we go for plastics, we get the research lab. And a research lab will give us plus four science per turn for each one we build and an extra 50% science in the city that it's built. It also allows us to build Christ the Redeemer, which gives um, a reduction by 10% in adopting new cult uh, cultural policies and plus five culture per turn. So we're definitely going to go for plastics. What are we going to build over here at Cork? Well, have we got anything that could potentially give us something useful? I mean, what we could do here is go for the constabulary and the police station to try and get the um, CIA, but there's not a lot of point in doing that anyway. Let's go for the market, because that will give us extra gold. Might as well do that. Keeping my eye on happiness, it is starting to drop a little bit. So... Let's build the Eiffel Tower. We can do that. It'll give us some tourism. It'll give us some great merchant slots, slots which will help with the money. And it will give us five happiness. So it's worth doing that. Glasgow. We're going to go for the public school at Glasgow because that will help with the um, science. I mean, not a great deal. It's one science for every two citizens in the city. Well, let's say we've only got eight because obviously it's, a, it's not a round number. So that's only an extra plus four science. But it gives us three science anyway. So it's a total of an extra seven science per turn, and it gives us a great scientist slot. So it is worth having on the whole. Okay, we've got a submarine. It's been a while since I did this. I can't remember why I built it, but what I'm going to do is I can take this around to have a little look at what the Zulus have got going on. Still got this uh, Egyptian city here, of interest to you? but they can't do uh, an awful lot at the moment. I've pretty much blocked off their expansion, which is absolutely fine. It's what I intended to do. Got my great general here. Now you gain great generals when you get a certain amount of XP from killing units. Which is I've probably got just from farming barbarians. But I'm just going to... Or I may have even got him from building one of the wonders or one of the social policies. I can't actually remember now. But I don't have a lot of use to him at the moment. So he's just going to sit there quietly. We'll go straight on to next turn. Because nothing really significant has happened here. We'll need to move that submarine. So we're going to use this to scout a little bit. Now, the great things with submarines is um, they are... Where are we? They're invisible because they're underwater. And they can also pass below ice tiles. Now, they can see other submarines. And you can... Uh, they, they get a bonus for attacking as well. 
and they are ranged, so they're actually a very nice unit. They can be spotted by other submarines. They can also be spotted by boats if they get in the adjacent tile to them as well. So, you know, they're not uh, they're not completely stealthy, but they're certainly good a good way of uh, exploring the map. They're quite quick as well. But the fact that you can go under ice tiles means that you can get uh, you can take some shortcuts that most other units can't take, which is quite nice. So Truro's finished whatever that was doing. Um, let us go for the police station here, and we'll attempt to get a police station in every city if we can. Probably won't manage it, but we're going to give it a go anyway. We're going to keep moving this submarine as far down as we can. Start heading towards the Zulus. They seem to have declared peace with a lot of city-states. The camera's doing that weird auto-scrolling thing again, which is very annoying. Right, I'll give him the marble. Let's let's stay friendly with him. I mean, it'd be nice to get something back in return. We are starting to generate a bit of gold now. I'm going to save that up, mainly because it's very tempting to spend it on buildings that you could easily build within a couple of turns, and then all of a sudden you find out you've got a wonder you can build, and it requires a certain building in each city. And if only you just had a tiny bit more gold, you'd have been able to do that. So Berlin, well... This is as far as um, culture goes, or tourism. We're right down here at the bottom, which is not a good thing. But if we look at the cultural uh, victory influence by player, we are not cultural over anybody. If we just have a look at Germany. I mean, Germany don't have a massive culture advantage over anybody, really. Um, the lowest culture is probably me, which is really weird. I usually have more than that by now. Um, the Zulus seem to have quite a high culture at the moment. That's quite strange. So Nantes is going to carry on and we will get them to do... Let's go for the stock exchange. Let's try and get as much gold coming in now and then we can use that to speed things up a little bit when we get a bit further on with our science. So we're going to go for the bank here as well at Cork. I mean, Cork's not producing a lot of money, but it's worth getting as much money, as much production, as much science going as we can. But carry on moving this submarine down. Uncover a little bit of the map as we go along. Let's get back over here. So we're starting to get into that portion of the game now where we're just waiting for turns to resolve because there isn't an awful lot that I can do in between. I could do a little bit of fine-tuning. I could mess around with a few bits and pieces and, you know, get an extra couple of science here or an extra couple of production there. But uh, I think for the moment we'll just grind on and see what we can get. We are playing this on Prince. This is a standard difficulty level. So let's see how far we can get without having to be too advanced with our strategies. That's as far as our sub can move. Douglas has finished its current construction. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build a hydro plant now. It, uh, it'll give us one happiness, and it also gives us um, one production for every tile next... Actually, I'm not going to build that. It's for the wrong city. It gives you one production for every tile next to a river, but Douglas isn't the one that has the rivers. What was I going to build there, then? Can't remember now. Completely forgot. Um, what we will do is we'll go for the constabulary there. We might as well start getting them built where we can. We do need to start getting some hotels up. That will give us a boost to our culture. America's denounced the Zulus. Hardly surprising. I'd have thought they'd have done that already by now. As you can see, we have quite a lot of oil. We actually have 38 oil. He wants to make peace with us. Um, we might as well. There's no reason not to. Um, I was hoping to put some pressure on him and hopefully reduce his score a little bit by keeping him in a perpetual war. But it could well be that he ends up going to war with America. And he's already had a couple of his, city, his cities revolt and switch sides. So that's certainly not helping him out. Either way, I'm still going to take my submarine over here and keep an eye on him and see what he's doing. So that's not a problem at all. Got another caravan done with whatever it was doing. Now, where was that going previously? Was it going to one of my own cities? No. It was going... I wish they'd make it a little bit easier to find the previous route on this list, to be quite honest. Okay, it was going to Tyre. Well, we can carry on with that. It's 11 gold per turn. No reason why not to. Two more turns until plastic is complete. So let's let them carry on and get that done and out of the way. 
try and stop the map from uh, glitching out as much as we can. Right now, Ex Alexander's plotting against us. Hardly a surprise there either. This is another reason. Um, you see, now the Zulus actually want me, to, even though we've just been at war with him. You see, the only friendly things we've got is that we forgave them for spying and we've got no contested borders. You know, we actually, we've, we've become friends with their enemies. Uh, we've uh, adopted uh, an ideology which is different to theirs, but he still wants me to go to war with him with the Americans. I'm going to say no, but if he goes to war with America, that will sort of slow his score down a little bit, providing he's not too successful. So this is another, as I was saying, this is another one of the reasons why I'm trying to save up a little bit of gold. Because if Alexander does suddenly decide that he wants to get aggressive, I need to be able to respond to his attack. And this will probably mean having to buy a lot of units quite quickly. So what I'm going to do for now is, is keep some money in the bank so that if he does start to attack me, I actually have a way to try and uh, defend myself a little bit. See, he's the biggest threat to me because he is the closest. He, he doesn't actually have to go through anybody else to get to me. He is right on my border. Whereas the Zulus and America is actually quite far away. See, look at this. We've just finished war and he wants to accept embassy. Well, there's no reason why not to. We just need to keep an eye on him score-wise. Uh, yeah, he's still a couple of hundred behind me almost. So he's not doing too great. I think there's a very realistic chance that I could pull away from him right here. And we have research plastics, which is brilliant. What we're going to do now, look back in the tech tree. And what I think we will do is we'll go for ballistics. Because ballistics will allow us to have radar. We need ballistics to get radar and combined arm. Well, we need radar to get rocketry, which we need for the Apollo program. So we've got to go ballistics, then radar. Radar is very good because that allows us to build bombers and fighters, which gives us, and, and paratroopers, and airports. Now, airports are brilliant because as well as providing additional tourism and, and culture, what they allow you to do is if you've got an airport at a city, you can move a unit into that city. Uh, it has to be a ground unit. Naval units don't work. But it can be a military unit or a civilian unit. So it works with workers and uh, great engineers and great profits and things like that. And you can literally airlift a unit from one city to another city. As long as both cities have an airport and it takes one turn. And it works with any friendly city as well. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be one of your cities. It can be one of your friend's cities. So let's just move this submarine over to where I wanted him. So, for example, I could have an airport here in Cork and I could airlift a unit from Cork all the way down to uh, St. Louis down here in a single turn, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, you can land providing the other city has an airport, providing they're your ally, and providing there is a free space in one of the six hexes that surround the city. Obviously, you can't land directly in the city because it's not your city. If it's your own city, you can land directly in the city. So, anyway, enough waffling on. We're going to start getting research labs wherever we can. You need to have a public school in order to do this, but it will give you an extra 50% science output and an extra plus four per turn. So, well worth having. Everywhere we can build one of these, we are going to build one. And you should see our science start to jump up. We're already on 812 uh, research per turn now, which is up from the 770, which we were 10 turns ago. So we are starting to improve on our research per turn now, which is always a very good thing. We've got our upcoming session at the United Nations in five turns, which is fine. We're going to carry on moving this submarine. Getting close to Shaka's borders now. You can actually see his cultural borders are there. And Cork, that can go and do the research lab. To be fair, it could actually do with something that gives it a little bit more production to speed things up. But we'll get the research lab going first. We'll worry about the production later. Let everybody else have their turn. Yeah, we do have an awful lot of oil. Now, Truro is actually quite slow to grow at the moment and yeah mind you, it's, a, it's a decent sized city I'll give it that but it is growing a little bit slowly so while I've got a fairly decent amount of money 
I'm going to purchase a work boat. I'd like to purchase two, but then I'll have a stack unit, so I can't do it. And I'm going to get these fish here, and I'm going to get these fish here, and that should hopefully give us a little bit of a boost to our growth there. Glasgow is also going to do the... Actually, we're going to do the zoo first at Glasgow. Let's try and boost the happiness a little bit more as well. Then we'll do the research lab. And let's move our submarine up on the next turn. We we'll actually should be close enough to see something. It doesn't have the best vision, unfortunately. Now, most naval units, if they're ranged, only have a range of two hexes. And I know that his capital city is further inland than that battleships however do have a range of three and we can build battleships so there is a very real possibility if we do go to war that we could bombard his capital from the sea and then we'd have to land a unit to take it but we'll see how that goes we're going to have a, a as good a look around as we can without cutting through his territory so we could actually put a unit there if we put a battleship in that hex, one, two, three, or one, two, three. So it is close enough to the coast to be hit by a battleship. But then, like I said, you've got to land a unit and actually get that in in order to be able to capture it. But that is a nice thing to know. Another caravan in Dublin. Where was it going before? What was it doing? Nobody knows. So this annoying pop-up that you get when you're scrolling up and down. Oh, it was going to cork. Uh, if you actually leave this pop-up, you can actually see, it tells you here, how it calculates how much money, um, science, and religion passes both ways. So you see at the top, my revenue, my uh, gold base of one. And it calculates this based on the gold per turn that my city generates versus the gold per turn the city I'm visiting generates and there's also some gold bonuses from various buildings as well now each resource you have gives you or each different resource you have gives you a 0 0.5 extra gold so as you can see there there are six resources that we have that are different from the resources that Berlin has which gives us an extra three gold in total so in total that's 11.62 gold um, which gets rounded up uh, also, we've discovered eight technologies that they haven't, and technologies are worth 0 0.5 science. So because we're eight technologies ahead, we're actually giving him four science per turn as well. So it's a good way to have a look and work out just exactly how you're making money by visiting these other cultures and other civilizations. Um, Ten, I think, is the highest one that I've seen so far. Let's go to Argos, because at least that way we're not getting any religious pressure back that isn't already our own religion. If you ever want to double check that, you can see your trade routes by going into additional information and clicking the trade route overview. You can see where your trade routes originate from. You can see which cities they are visiting. You can also see at a glance gold in, gold out, science in and out. Food and production obviously is only if it's to an internal city. Religious pressure and how many turns the um, trade route is going to last for because... It depends how far away the city is as to how many turns that trade's going to last. If you mouse over, you get that same pop-up that you got on the previous screen that actually gives you all the information showing you how the religious pressure, the gold and science is calculated. So pretty much everything is available at a glance. There's our first work boat, which we're going to get out to there. And we're going to purchase our second work boat while we're there. And we're going to go on to the next turn. Don't know why the music's still quite dramatic. We're not actually at war anymore. I don't think we're at war with anybody. Oh no, we're still at war with Ormus for some strange reason. That's why I'm still getting that dramatic war music. Um, let's make peace with them. Yeah, there we go. They must have been the allies of someone we were attacking. At least we can get rid of that overdramatic war music now. So we're going to move that work boat up to here. And turn that into food. There we go. It's already just gone down from, I think it was 34 to 23 turns. So that extra food has helped. We've got another work boat in there, which is going to get down here. Again, that's going to take a couple of turns. Unit still needs orders, which will be our sub. So we're going to use it to uncover as much as we can. So he does have a, another coastal city there. That's good to know. I'm going to have a little snoop around the south coast as well. See what I can find. 
Is the following trade of interest to you? Well, not really, because what you want me to do here is open my borders and give you a lot of gold, coal, and aluminium. Or uh, uh, aluminum, because this is American. Um, no. I'm no interest in doing that at the moment. So let's move on and see what happens. Yes, I have had people ask me why m myself and other English people or British people say aluminium. Well, it's because in English it has an extra I in it and it is actually aluminium. So it is a little bit weird, but there again, we British think it's really strange when we hear it's hear it pronounced aluminum. It sounds really strange to us. Just one of those little cultural differences. So, we've killed an American spy. You are a friend to liberty. We'll let it slide this time, but please stop doing it again. At the end of the day, if he wants to keep throwing his spies at our capital city and getting horribly murdered, that's absolutely fine. Rosalind Franklin has arrived. We're going to use him for almost 6,000 boost like to bullets. our research. Progress is the real so, we're now in the Atomic Era. We now have an additional spy as well. And we're going to move that spy to... I think we're going to go... Hmm, strange that uh, Hamburg seems to have... Uh... Let's go to Hamburg. Have a quick look at Germany. Yeah, because I was going to say, Berlin's Germany's capital. But Hamburg actually has a, a larger population. That's quite strange, quite unusual. Uh, so, yeah, we've got a new spy. We now need to go for radar, for the reasons I mentioned before. Nantes is now going to build its research lab. And again, not an awful lot else we can do this turn. We'll get a unit needs orders because of that work, though. So, 22 turns for Truro to grow. If we drop the work, though probably do nothing because it's probably outside of its working area at the moment but well that, that actually that tile may well end up getting worked by Nantes because it's closer to Nantes than it is to Truro but either way it's worth doing it because growth overall is is good the day is yours. we'll forgive him this time not that he's apologized several times for spying on me and every time I forgive him and then you know 10 turns later he's got another spy trying to steal from me but you know, it's him throwing his spies away, what can I say? And we know that he's, uh, he's plotting against us, even though he is friendly. So, this is another one of those traits that other civilization leaders can have. Uh, it's how loyal they are to you. So, yeah, he's not very, not very loyal at all. One thing that will be said, though, is if you can actually manage to become friends with the Zulus, if you become friends with Shaka, he is one of the most fiercely loyal um, leaders in the game. So if you become friendly with Shaka and you have a mutual enemy and someone starts trying to attack you, he will come and beat the snot out of them for you. So he, uh, he does have his uses. I'm going to continue to move our sub around the outskirts of his borders. Have a snoop, see what he has. Okay, world religion, Buddhism, I have absolutely no interest in doing that, so I am going to commit as many of my delegates to saying nay as possible. It may still pass, which would be a bit of a pain. What I should have probably done was bribe some of the other cities to um, vote nay for me. You can do that with the trade. Can't actually do it on the turn that the session is in progress, unfortunately, so it's a little bit too late to do that now. We'll continue over to Athens. And that's pretty much that for the end of that turn. Happiness is still at 10. I mean, it's not going up, but at the same time, it's not going down either. Do you have anything useful to me? How about you give me some wine and some crab? And I'll give you some oil and some aluminium. Will that work? No, because you want a lot more stuff from me in return for it. Um... I'm going to say no. The reason I'm going to say no is we know he's plotting against us and I'd prefer him not to be able to travel half of his army through my borders and prepare to attack me from the inside. He's going to have to come through me if he wants to get to me. Also as well, there are certain units which although can normally travel through closed borders. So for example, if you're using a uh, missionary or an inquisitor or a great prophet, 
Yeah, world religion fails. Really? Brilliant. Oh. And the Eiffel Tower is complete. So, um, if you actually have a, uh, a great prophet, a great prophet can actually move through the enemy's territory or through neutral territory, even if their borders are closed, but they do take attrition, which means every turn they end... Uh, and they're still in somebody else's borders, they lose a little bit of their conversion power. But if the land they're in has open borders, they don't. So by keeping your borders closed, it does help reduce the chances of somebody else getting their missionaries into your um, civilization and converting and turning your units. So we're going to upgrade these knights to cavalry. We're going to upgrade these Gatling guns to um, machine guns because... I've got to keep my eye on Chicago there, basically. Now, buzzes, uh, buzzes, buzzes them. Buddhism was not passed. In fact, everybody voted nay, apart from the Americans. So, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, we only won by two votes there. Uh, but Embargo City States has now passed, unfortunately, which means we can no longer trade with the City States, which is... A bit of a pain. So what are we going to do at Edinburgh? Well, the first thing we should probably do here, to be honest, is get the research lab up and running. But I'd, pre I'd prefer to get Christ the Redeemer up. So what I'm going to do is go Christ the Redeemer, but I'm going to purchase the research lab. That's quite expensive, as you can see, 1,350 gold. But that is the sort of reason why I want to keep or try and get the amount of gold up so I can do things like that. So as you can see, city-states now no longer available. We can't trade with them anymore. This caravan was probably trading with a city-state on the previous turn, which is why it's now come back to us. So let's go to Sparta. We've got 84 pressure from Voltology from one trade route, so I don't need to worry too much about the Eastern Orthodoxy coming back from Sparta. Let us trade with Sparta. And this is probably going to be the last turn for this video. Cardiff is about to grow here. And that is pretty much all we can do on this turn. Let's just have a quick look at that submarine and just see what it's doing because it's probably got some movement left. Yep, so we're going to have a scout around. Again, they've got another city here right on the uh, right on the edge. So we're going to have go around and have a look at that. But there, that's not too bad. I mean, we've played sort of just under 20 turns in on this particular video and we've managed to get our research up from 770 per turn to 897. So it is increasing uh, nicely. I would like to get a little bit more gold going. Happiness has improved as well. And we're quite close to being able to adopt another social policy. So I'm quite happy with the progress so far. We've still got 139 turns left to win, which is more than doable. We are still highest on score although Shaka does appear to be catching up again slightly but this is literally just because he has so much land he, he owns so much territory this is where all of his scores coming from so I'm not too worried about that. So as always, guys, I hope you're still enjoying the videos. And remember, if you do have any questions, either send me a message or leave it in the comments below. And I'll do my best to answer it for you. So until then, I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.